will take you to a place where my friends foregather. There are vampires, werewolves, ghouls, every kind of monster you could ever imagine. I am Sailor of the Mount Mori. I have come with my forces to conquer you. <laughs> Just a minute, you'll forget that you had any trouble. You are one of his kind now. I suppose you know you broke up my home. I didn't know that you were in the home. When did you get out? Others, let us pray. No! Deliver his hearts from all evil spirits, all vain imaginings, projections and phantasms, and all deceits of the evil. the elizabeth sullivan cackle ends we are back for another week <laughs> and uh hope everybody has uh had a good week and ready to watch a um space cowboyish kind of movie kind of funky 60s vibe yes 60s 70s yeah hope everybody's well we um the former director we talked about last week, Roy Ward Baker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, this movie was another recommendation by someone by the name of Darren Zahn. Uh, we don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> My better half. <laughs> and this one is a 1969 British science fiction film. From yep. Hormer, Hormer, from Hormer Hammer, <laughs> from Hammer <laughs> Films, directed by Roy Lloyd Baker and starring James Olsen, Catherine Schell, Warren Mitchell, and Adrian Kahn. Or is that Calm or Corey? Corey, I think Corey, Adrian Corey, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, the film takes place on the moon in the year 2021, so a couple of years ago now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, former astronaut turned salvager Bill Kemp helps a millionaire space industrialist capture a 6,000 ton sapphire asteroid while also helping a woman find her brother, a missing miner uh, and prospector. Um, at um, EBPC L3 Studios in uh, Hell Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire, England. England, yeah. I'm getting old. My eyes are getting bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by Michael Carez from Original Story by Gavin Lyle, Frank Harmon, and Martin Davidson. In the U.S., the film was billed as a space western with the phrase, the first moon western. Yeah. I a failure, too, wasn't it? Yeah. I think they had high hopes for this one, but they didn't have the budget from what I've read um, and seen. I think um, it didn't go down well with critics. Um, they found a lot of issues with it. And I think um, reading through, I did see a, um, 
couple comments on the reception. Uh, it said a 1992 interview with in a 1992 interview with Starlog, uh, Roy Ward Baker was negative towards the film, lamenting its budget for hindering plot possibilities and what he saw as the miscasting of James Olsen in the lead role. Baker also was critical of producer and writer Michael Carrera's roles with the film while being fine with its with his producing. Baker thought Carreras overstretched himself with his positions. And this is from uh, Wikipedia entry. Um, and it says the actual quote from uh, Roy Ward Baker out of the Starlog interview says, Moon Zero Two was a bad picture. It was hopeless and never got off the ground. We didn't have enough money to do it properly. It was crazy, a complete muddle. And it was undercut by the fact that you could turn on the television and see Neil Armstrong jumping about on the real moon so <laughs> so it, it you could see he was really frustrated you know i think he had much bigger um aspirations for it and i think he was obviously very upset you know by the fact that it, it just for whatever many reasons didn't get to come together the way he wanted it to with that being this one suffers from go ahead Ooh, sorry go ahead no, go ahead. I know this one with um, suffers from one of those too much interference by the studios. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a shame because. It's... Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say that you can see that as the movie progresses. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like the whole Aliens Three scenario. Where they didn't, I don't think they trusted the director enough yeah. for his vision. You know, yeah, don't get me started on Aliens 3. Oh my God. Mm. So bad. Um, yeah, and it's a shame because the concept yeah, yeah. Uh, is fun. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what I, sorry, <laughs> what, I, what I was thinking too is the character. Um, who is the, he's kind of like, he's his character of Bill Kemp and he's employed by this millionaire industrialist to get this sapphire asteroid um, while helping a woman find her brother. His character, I kind of agree with Roy Ward Baker, is not, he doesn't feel right in the role. He's, he's a little bit flat for me. Um, but he's kind of like a, he, he should be kind of like a Han Solo type character. He should be quite dynamic and quite, quite the focus. Um, so I wasn't that um, blown away by his performance. Um, so yeah, I kind of agree with him. I think that was a little bit miscast. But the positive things about Catherine this. Show. Yeah, I mean, you've got some amazing actors in this. I mean, there's so many, there are, plenty of positives in that regard um it's fun the costumes are are a hoot um and the 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 similarities to the later shows like ufo um it's 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 quite amazing you know you 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 start thinking about ufo while you're while you're watching it especially like some of the wigs that um the actresses wear um so it's um it is what it is it's fun uh, in that regard, if you don't expect, you know, anything spectacular. Um, and it's, uh, I think it it's definitely one of those B classics that's just fun to sort of go back and watch and just, just not take that seriously, just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And this has also got a couple, um, uh, like it's got a who's who of British actors who really went on to, some big stuff mm -hmm. um as you said before we went on um on air that you know a lot of american actors won't recognize american uh, audiences yeah but yeah i mean if you're a classic doctor who fan, yeah mm -hmm. i mean you got Catherine shell who is in uh, um city of death yeah bernard blebrezla was one of the ice warriors mm -hmm. And even Roy Evans, who uh, was a very famous character actor, was in a lot of Doctor Who, and he was in a few shows we showed last year. 
Blake like Seven, one, was he? Only Fools and Horses, and Black Adder as mm. well. So yeah, lots of very well known uh, British character actors. And then of course you had um, the actor Warren Mitchell, um, who was, uh, you know, very, very well known uh, British actor. Won a BAFTA TV award twice, Laurence Olivier Award, uh, and I believe he was, uh, yeah, he, he played um, Alf Garnet, which UK audiences will be very familiar with, which was which ended up being the. Uh, the pattern for um, the format for All in the Family, which is a very beloved uh, US uh, TV franchise. So um, yeah, some incredibly big names. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, it, was it was, it was, it was a great, it, it was, it was well presented for an American audience. And I, and you can understand why they do that, why they change some of the formats, mm -hmm. But then they keep the overall format, which did work. Um, you know, you've got a, a family member who's kind of an embarrassment because he's he's uh, embarrassingly bigoted, but he's but you know he's he's the the show the the whole overall show is really um, great to watch because everybody had you know kind of somebody in their family that they could relate to. He's got, you know, he's got his his kids are in it, and his wife Edith and Jean Stapleton was a was a fantastic actress, very very prestigiously, you know, prestigious actress. Um, so it again, you know, a lot of actors involved were um, were in Moon Zero Two uh, that went on to do some some things that are now household names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right. With that being said, with that being said, shall we start the movie? Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, Moon Zero Two. Oops, I'm on the wrong screen to push play. <laughs> <laughs> Opening. <laughs> the first of the it reminded me of uh, Space 1999, but then you get this. Um... I'm getting a, a lot of sound from the film, but I'm not able to hear your dialogue over. Find the world you're seeking where stars are new in the making. You hear me now? It's time to fly deep spaces calling you. I think so. Go far, go wild, go lonely. New worlds are there for the taking. I'm set to go. Let's travel just we two. Oh, this day will be our Here you're going to be in for a fucking trip if something's open. This, I was, when Darren and I were watching this recently, it reminded me a lot of the Pink Panther type intros around this time. They had like the, they'd have like the, the animated characters. And obviously very Cold War era. I think this intro goes on for a while, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. 
the world we land on and love is what we'll be making you know the way we start to wonder if it's going to be an animated film at first <laughs> well, that's what i thought when i first saw yeah Kind of expect to see Leia's ship go over the top. <laughs> yeah, we said that as well. <laughs> The way this starts, it sort of makes you think it's going to be like this real heavy duty, serious. Mm -hmm. And it totally takes a left turn. <laughs> Two left turns, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Like you started now thinking you took a couple of hits off a bomb from Tommy Chong's uh, House of Bomb, and then <laughs> you're, you're up and running having a major trip. <laughs> I know. And you get this funky music coming in now. We've gone from like spooky, eerie music to something else entirely. This is a good show. It's like, are we supposed to be gripped by this or? <laughs> <laughs> is there any dialogue in this movie? Moon Zero Two calling Moon Control. Moon Zero Two, this is Moon Control. Zero Two to Moon Control. Two minutes from outer approach, request landing instructions. Zero Two, we have you on radar. Uh, one five seven, decelerate at one point eight G. Zero Two, understand. One five seven at one point eight G. 
Over. Snap it up, zero two. This is Pan Am Moon Express, and we're just ten minutes out. That is your hard luck, Moon Express. First come, first down. And you are an hour behind schedule. Punch it, Chewie. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Almost the guy comes across. Another, uh, Go ahead. I was going to say, I expected another animated sequence there all of a sudden. <laughs> he just seems so like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. He, there's no like, it's like, come on, dude, wake up. You're in a movie. <laughs> it's just like, like you said, he was like, just. A, like he just got finished smoking a bong or something, you know. He was just like, "Yeah, whatever, man." Little puff, puff, pass. <laughs> it's an awesome shot. I mean, it's up in light of a Jerry Anderson movie. Yep, yep. This is where it starts think looking a lot like Jerry Anderson now. It is. It's a great shot. It's a shame because it had a lot of promise. Yeah. That's a pop spot, by the way. That's not an uh, engine. Hello, passengers. Evacuating. Intercity flight 009 to Mars. Please assemble at L08. Are you a resident of the moon, sir? No. Have you read the customs regulations? The regulations are perfectly clear on this point. There is a 30% import duty on all electronic equipment. For the third time, this is not electronic equipment, not with a meteorite hole like that in it. It's legitimate salvage. United Nations Space Charter 37B. Uh, well, well, the bit about uh, objects which may prove a danger to navigation. All right, what is that? Which will include any communications or other satellite which will have ceased to function. That thing hasn't given a squeak in a week. And you notice nobody has been able to read your run too far side ever since it blew out. Yes, I've noticed you read the book. And it isn't even my job. Hmm? Spaceways. He's good, that guy. He's got more of a personality than the other guy does. I wish you'd sell that thing along with all the other space rubbish you collect. Huh? You're a bloody menace. I don't think I caught the name. I'm the second officer of the Moon Express. You delayed us for nearly two minutes. If you took off on time, you might land on time. I don't <laughs> see I that my... seeing our passenger customs. I was just telling this man... You can't tell this man anything about anything. Now, see to the passengers. Good day, sir. Uh, yeah. Bye, Karen. The future captain. Thank <laughs> God not all of them make it. Dan, get this over to the square yard. So, this is 2021, With beginning of the Karens right here. And don't take anything less than 12,000 dollars for it. I'll try. I've just got time for a shower. Uh, I want to talk to you, Bill. Mm, My name is Taplin. Please, uh, turn and face the immigration identification computer, please. Sorry. When I first saw this, I thought of, um, what's that Spider-Man bad guy? Is there a message the message desk too. In the cartoon? Thank you. Oh, okay. Yep. Feeding us out I'm sorry, Mr. Hubbard. I hope you enjoyed your trip, sir. No more or less than a hundred other trips I've taken. That's a nifty little charmer. J.J. Hubbard. So that's a hundred percent Hubbard. Is he always like that? Sir, to the likes of us. What does he want up here? Uh, I don't know. Probably wants to buy a hundred percent of the moon. If it was mine, he could have it. Cheap. Listen, I was uh, talking to personnel back at Earth Base. What is he I still like you back out? in the corporation, Bill. <laughs> I stopped the exploration flights again? No. But uh, when they outfit the first flight to Mercury, tell them to call me. Come on, Bill. You know the answer to that one. They can build the engines, but where do they find the stuff to line the rocket tubes for journeys like that? We've got regular flights to Mars and Venus. What more do you want? I'm not coming back into the corporation on passenger runs. I'm a space pilot, not a mechanically minded wet nurse. 
Thank you very much. Someone has to be a passenger pilot. What's that you say? I said, someone has to be a passenger pilot. Can't hear you. <laughs> Forget it. I'll buy you a drink back in town, right? Oh, I'm sorry, miss. This area is out of bounds to passengers. Um, I'm looking for Mr. Captain Kemp. Oh. Uh, well, he's in there. He's uh, doing something just at the moment, but he won't be long. You go right in. <laughs> he knew exactly what he was doing there. <laughs> What are you doing here? I, I was looking for Captain Kemp. This place is reserved for space personnel only. I'm sorry. Are you Captain Kemp? Will you go away? Are you? No! Hmm. Monorail to oh. will depart in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh. Otto? Otto got killed? A couple of days ago. Roy Evans? Mm -hmm. Retro engines failed on landing. That's what I heard. Went straight in. Crunch. Yeah, to put that thing outside where people could read it. Passengers wouldn't like it. Would worry them. Hmm. I suppose so. Did you get the 12,000? Hey, he flew the same sort of space ferry you got, didn't he? Mm-hmm. His was a little bit older, that's all. How much longer are we to be kept sitting here? We're leaving right away, Mr. Hubbard. Magazine? Cocktail. Here, sir. He doesn't drink and he can't read. You have a nice one. Janie. Hello, Bill. You look great. New uniform. Uh, same old me on the inside, though. Got a seat? One up front for the captain. This is Captain Kemp, Miss Tapton. You said... I'm always at a disadvantage when I haven't got any clothes on. I never noticed it. Well, <laughs> what did you want to see me about? The receptionist at the spaceport told me you fly over to Farside occasionally. Mm -hmm. I wondered if you know my brother, Wally Taplin. He's a miner. Mm, no, no, I don't think I know him. He was supposed to meet me at the spaceport. He's probably waiting at Moon City. Mm, that's what the man said. We'll check it out when we get there. Your first time up here? Mm, yes. Then I suggest you look up front. A cool shot. My God, it's so yeah. Big. No air, no vegetation, one sixth rather. Fourteen days sunlight, fourteen days night. I suppose bleak is as good a way as any to describe it. We're all foreigners here. We always will be. Perhaps we should never have come. <laughs> I know. It's like... <laughs> Where are we going with it? You know, the shots are really freaking awesome. They are. They are. That guy's the dullest dishwater. Yeah. It. This. He was. He's quite a well-known character actor. Um, in the states, because he's he's looking really familiar, and I'm noticing that he was in loads. Um, Battlestar Galactica, the original. They turn sunlight into energy, and the ice. Obviously mine. not a regular character, but Smart. he's in it. Marcus Welby, Streets of San Francisco, Columbo, Maud. 
melt it into water, you drink it. Break it into oxygen, you breathe it. A hydroponics laboratory. Plants that just, process oxygen. He just seems what? miscast in this one. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it anywhere else. It's funny to think that with no air out there, nobody can just open up a window or stroll about and feel rain on their faces. Captain Kemp, I'm afraid we have no reservation in the name of Mr. Wallace Taplin, nor have we any messages for a Miss Clementine Taplin. However, I've reserved form 328 for you, miss. Thank you. Or oh, could be he's just late. The monorail doesn't go any farther than Moon City, so he'd be coming by bug. Bug? It's a way you get around up here. They run convoys of them over to far side to bring back the minerals. But it's a slow business. She looks much better with that claim? stupid cap on her head. Spectacle I know, I was just thinking the same thing. She's a beautiful, beautiful... Um, woman and I don't understand where they were going with that silly costume matter. The nearest base is yeah, that was quite five. Five. now that's yeah. at least two <laughs> miles to Moon City six days by convoy that means it takes longer to get from one side of the moon to the other than it does to get here from Earth that's right what about your spaceship ferry it's only a moon ferry slow but I can do it in 20 minutes that's what she said. Goes out to go see when the next convoy <laughs> arrives. I can send a radio message, can't I? Mm -hmm. To see if he's left. Oh, well, no. Uh, well, you could have last week. You see, we use a ring of communication satellites for relaying waves around the curve, but one was hit by a meteorite. So we're out of touch with Farside right now. 21st century. It'll still be the same in the 25th. I suppose so. Thanks for your help anyway. Oh, come on. It's not as bad as all that. Splurge job. Buy yourself a new outfit. You'll feel better. Welcome to the Galaxy Boutique. Can I help you? Jupiter jumpsuits. <laughs> Jupiter jumpsuits. <laughs> Space Captain William H. Kemp reporting to Agent Elizabeth Murphy of the Lunar Bureau of Investigation. Or a booty call. A booty call. <laughs> interrogation. See, they call it interrogation. We call it booty. <laughs> Apparently, she likes them dull. Yeah. <laughs> trust you to get your timing wrong. I'm on duty in half an hour. Mm. That's a bit of a buzzkill. <laughs> well, I have time to talk, anyway. She's not dressed. Doesn't it. look like she's dressed for talking. <laughs> Spend a dollar and make a dollar. Mm -hmm. Big business. I suppose you've heard about Otto. It happens all the time. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard you say that about a pilot. It doesn't seem to happen to corporation pilots. Not you, too. I just had Harry on to me a while back. I'll tell you what I told him. I'm not going back into the corporation. When they gave up exploration flights, they... They gave up killing pilots. I'd lose my job if I let you see this, so I won't. Please explain delay. Submitting evidence for grounding space ferry Moon Zero Two. Urgent. Repeat. Urgent. They're really out to get me. Not you, Bill. Your ship. You know it isn't safe anymore. Space travel's still fairly new. And the public isn't sure about it. They can't see the difference between your old space ferry and a Corporation Express. So any crash is bad news. Otto's crash has rarely turned the heat on. The corporation chases the Bureau, and the Bureau chases me. And suddenly I'm running. It could have been anyone else. I'd have had them grounded a month ago, you know that. 
I know that, Liz, but it's still the only spaceship I've got. The corporation will take you back. You're still one of the best pilots they ever had. But once you get yourself grounded for safety reasons, they won't touch you with a radar beam. They damned. I'm still not a passenger. Bill, the exploration is over. It'll never be over. There's Mercury and the moons of Jupiter, and maybe not Saturn yet, but Uranus and Neptune. <laughs> that was a way to there are a lot of <laughs> The corporation doesn't do it. Somebody else will. And you'd rather get yourself killed on some star than stay alive here on the tatty old moon. At least let me probe Uranus and see what's going anyway, on. <laughs> Who's going to do the emergency local flight? You need my ferry now. If I have to make the final decision, I must decide to save your life. For whom? I'll give you one week more. I'm not going to cover for you any longer. Get yourself a major overhaul or a new spaceship. Or you're on the ground. That went well. Mm. So much for the booty call. <laughs> what do we have here? Here we go. There's the money shot. <laughs> It's like the Rockettes in space. I'm sorry, were you saying something? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm a some too. He's a very good customer. And a good man. And a good pilot. As pilots go, he went. Moonflower, double. This is Latin American week. It's an old-fashioned pampas punch. This is pretty trippy. He's got this big dispenser thing. First one's on the house. So the price is right, game. <laughs> it still tastes like distilled rocket fuel. It is still distilled rocket fuel. How much is whatever this guy's smoking? Uh, Thirty-five dollars a shot. <laughs> What's that? We're a long way from. A long so I want what this guy is smoking. Scotland. I know. Yeah, I know. <sighs> I'd like to have said goodbye in Scotch, but I haven't got thirty-five bucks a shot. Isn't it about time you got hungry? <laughs> a good point, my captain. And so the gallant space engineer passes into the great unknown of Joe's old-time moon hush house, perhaps never to return. An opium he was out of a bunch back <laughs> a couple of years before he came to me. Maybe he's just glad to be alive. Sure, all engineers are crazy. What did you call this pompous punch? Tastes more like Tijuana brass polish. <laughs> We're not exactly the fly girls. Reminds me of the moment in the thing where Kurt Russell pours the the, the whiskey in the in the, the chess computer. Yeah, cheating bitch throws it in there. That's no way to treat a phone friend. I bought it a drink. What more can a man do? A gentleman wants a word with you. You can tell him to go to hell instead. Mister Hubbard wants to see you. Old hundred percent Hubbard. Why didn't you say so? You can go 100% to hell. Let's just go and see Mr. Hubbard. 
convince me. I'm convinced. Getting a little bit of stuttering. Hmm. Seems okay now. We'll throw. Next time. Community chest. Chest. Go to <laughs> She's on the way to a nip slip there. Just saying. Do not pass go. <laughs> Do not collect five hundred dollars. <laughs> Gripping stuff. Would you stop <laughs> sucking your thumb? <laughs> what are you going to do? I'll go to jail. Now, while you are in jail, I foreclose on the mortgage and I bankrupt you. They're playing Monopoly. I got the best. <laughs> <laughs> you 19,000 short. You owe me 17 cents. <laughs> you might Whitson, be the tax for the salary. And don't forget the interest. Oops, I'm getting a. That will be Harry with our guest. It's. Yeah. It's kind of like stuttering and freezing on my side a bit. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Steady on, folks. <laughs> oh, it's scotch. Now, why didn't you say so? Look, tell your man not to play with guns on the surface floor. One shot and we'd all have been breathing empty space. So that's why you didn't try to take it off me up there. Well, there had to be a reason, didn't there? <laughs> oh, your reputation didn't exaggerate, Mr. Kemp. Perhaps I should apologize for sending a man like Harry to fetch the pilot who was the first man on Mars. Oh, you're that Kemp. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, steady on, folks. You're flying a 10-year-old space ferry and salvaging dead satellites to sell to Ripping the junk stuff. Stuff. It's a living. <laughs> hardly, Mr. Kemp, hardly. Uh, you stop fiddling with that thing. But I've never been to Switzerland. The only thing worth seeing are the banks. <laughs> I think you knew Otto von Beck. No. <sighs> and I believe you are the only other pilot on the moon with a ship for charter. Otto was going to do a little job for me. Now, now, now he's dead. <laughs> do you know the asteroids, Mr. Kemp? The remains of a planet which exploded or was never formed. Some of them grains of dust, some the size of small moons and everything in between. Hundreds of thousands of them all wandering around the sun in strange orbits. Some never named, never charted. The orphans of the solar system, Mr. Kemp. And you want to become a father. <laughs> you can't set up a mine on an asteroid. The cost of flying the equipment up, the supplies, bringing the ore back, it never pays. Not mine it, Mr. Kemp. Land it on the moon. Land it? You mean crash it, and that's against the law. What's that drawing on the thing behind it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that. <laughs> Drop it on Moon City. Well, we don't do things that way. You would have the results of two years' research to help you. We will have the most experienced pilot on the Moon. So what's so special about one asteroid? Well, you'll find out for yourself when you get there, so I may as well tell you now. Whitson. The pacing in this is like, mm. like constipating. called <laughs> have either a name or a number. The asteroid was first photographed in 1998 when it happened to pass close to the Earth, <laughs> but it was never investigated or plotted. I, I saved you, chap. Ago. <laughs> this film was taken by Mr. Hubbard's astronomical division. The asteroid is barely 60 feet by 30 by 30, estimated mass approximately 6,000 tons. <laughs> 
Do you read spectrograms, Mr. Kemp? Some of the easy ones. This, oh, it looks like aluminum. It's very good. It's quite similar class. to aluminum. <laughs> the aluminum that has been squeezed and roasted in the heart of an exploding planet hundreds of millions of years ago. I lost the plot now. What is the <laughs> name again, Wilson? A ceramic crystalline form of corundum aluminum oxide. Yeah. <laughs> He's quite proud of that. Sapphire, Mr. Kemp. Sapphire. Six thousand tons of gemstone sapphire. That's what's so special about this asteroid. <laughs> well, oh, God. That's a nice profitable idea. But it's still against the law. To have your attention, Mr. Bond. <laughs> you know, that's what I was thinking. It's like they're trying to be a... He's trying oh, to be like a Bond oh, villain. Oh, I'm safe to <laughs> The Bureau wants to ground you. Oh, come now, Whitson. That's no way to treat our guest. Mr. Kent must be entirely free to make up his own mind. And just suppose I freely make up my mind to come in. What do I get out of it? A brand new space ferry? <laughs> Come in handy. Or the one tomorrow. <laughs> but at that price, you could get your own ship, get your own crew. But not secretly. You see, someone like myself starts to outfit an expedition into space when it attracts questions, snoopers, investigations from the Bureau. <laughs> but you, or you just pop off into space on one of your scavenging flights, no questions asked. And a few days later, an asteroid just happens to land on the far side of the moon. And Most since not nobody's Mr. bothered Bond. to plot it, nobody can say that it didn't land there naturally. Oh, my God. I've hit the moon Diane. before. I'm like really, you could land a plane in this in like the dead spaces between the, yeah, <laughs> between no. the scenes, and use space oh, just like that. That's what the man said. I assure you, weren't as drunk as <clears> I was. <throat> That's what I thought when I got up this morning. So I called him, and I wasn't drunk. drunk. High. So what's all <laughs> you need to be both, I think, to get through That's this the asteroid. Yeah. It seems that when Otto was to do the job, he had an option on some old K-5s from a Mars Explorer. You're all cheap. From a Mars Explorer. They must be at least uh, seven years old. They still look pretty good to me, except for number three. They never got the startup circuits right. Give her a thump and she'd light off early. Or if you didn't thump her, she wouldn't light at all. <laughs> That's what he Mars said. <laughs> do we need all three? Yes. They should be working right now. But don't tell anybody. Oh, God. Definitely a different look from uh, Romanesque right. goddess. Hmm. Nice boots. Nice boots, yeah. You're leaving again pretty quickly, Bill. Us unsalaried workers have to keep working. That looks like quite a heavy load you have there. What is it? Oh, some experimental propulsion equipment I want to test in space. We may have something really big here. Up, 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 up. Section 47C, paragraph 1. No information about commercial or industrial secrets need be disclosed without the authority Make of a sure moon cap. court warrant. <laughs> well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Good luck, Bill. You'll have to marry that girl, Bill. What do you mean, have to? It might be better than ever throw you in jail. I didn't tell her a lie just then. Oh, if you've got to that stage, you'd better marry her anyway. <laughs> like I asked him for more personality than the whole movie. He does. He does. 
And in fairness to the actor, the lead actor, I mean, the writing is extremely It's the lift off of Earth Express. We understand it's a sight no tourist should miss. When would you be ready to lift off? Yes, this time we can pay the bill. Okay. The I thought it was quite fun because look two. at Leonard Breslau's outfit. It's green. Yeah, He's got a that's so true. And Harry can help with the heavy work. I'll get out there. This slap like a uh, ice warrior mask. On. That's Mr. Kaminsky, isn't it? <laughs> engineer? What nationality is he? Born on Earth. It wasn't quite what I asked. We're all foreigners up here. Ready to go? Without the pistol, please. You don't take this off me twice. Then the trip's off. If that thing goes off in the ship, we'd never get back to explain why. Give it to me, Harry. Again, sir? Oh, I mean, wrong movie. <laughs> no gun, Harry. Let's hope we all have a profitable trip. Let you know in about four days. H. Walker, please report to immigration. Mrs. H. Walker, passenger on flight 320 Yeah, it's a great. <laughs> <sighs> okay, we're pressurized. You can take your helmets off. And I want the main course exactly 90 seconds after blast off. Yes, Mr. Camp. Are you letting him navigate? He's got a better computer than we have. Can he use it? Because the counting miles per hour isn't so different than dollars per second. <laughs> as long as he remembers you can't get miles per hour on credit. Moon control, zero two. Request takeoff clearance. <laughs> Round trip, no landing away as usual. My God, this is gripping. Oh, man. <laughs> Steady on. Oh, New York Clear. Mars Express you in 20 minutes. Zero two. I'll try to miss him. Out. <laughs> Light him if you got him, people. Yep. <laughs> That's some bad hat. That Harry. Course yet. <laughs> Relative to the elliptic, I want a course of alpha three five. You ain't one, kidding there. Seven nine speed. My nice straws quote. It sounds as if it knows. It does, doesn't it? Do you think you mean still sort of over there? Oh, more or less, I suppose. I hope it's not too difficult for you. Not at all, Mr. Whitson. Old chap. Well, if you have an orbitograph, I hope I can make the situation clear to you. It's over there. Well, it's not new, but I think it works. <laughs> okay. Jeez, this is... Uh... I have no words for how boring this is. <laughs> the moon revolving round. Now this year, this week, the, wet the asteroid paint is dried in my office. Closest approach to the moon, <laughs> not yet, on this course. Our interception course will be just, just here, forty-five <laughs> hours from now. You will arrange the engines on the surface of the asteroid, and we shall fire them four hours later. The asteroid will change to its orbit. You will observe that its speed relative to the moon is quite slow and that it is only visible from far side. The radar stations on near side cannot see it. You appreciate the importance of this. Well, if they could, we'd be in jail the moment we got back. Exactly. <laughs> then after an interval of three days, during which time the asteroid will have come to within 10,000 miles of the moon, we shall return to it, take new measurements, reset the engines, and fire them again. The asteroid lands on the moon. French. I get the picture. The convoy's in from Fireside 5! Finally, 
Somebody's excited. Ooh, it's some action. <laughs> oh, here we go. This is like the Western vibe now. Yeah. Wally. Sorry, I thought you were. Some UFO wig action going on there. me again but do you know mr wallace taplin wally yes i know wally but well enough apparently you a friend of his no i'm his sister that's a great relief was he on this convoy well if he was i didn't see him would you like to uh, sit down take a drink yes yes join us come on. three <laughs> more bucket fuels, please <laughs> why do they put the wig on her again i'm like what what's maybe going more. on maybe four mm. months he sent me a cable to meet him here. You're just up from Earth? Yeah. You tried radioing him? Oh, of course you can't. That satellite's out, isn't it? You'd think they'd have decent communications here on the moon. No government ever spent one dollar. Well, they'd lost five. Yes, five of us. Being out of contact the way we are around the back there. Hello, Miss Murphy. The lady's lost her brother. Mm. And you plan to spend the evening consoling her? <laughs> 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 Any news? Busted. What happened to him? Yeah. Nobody's seen him for months. Fancy, yes. Well, he may have just missed the convoy. It's pretty rough country out of Far Side Five. Yes, that's what must have happened. I've never known Wally in time for anything. Well, if you have any news or want any help, just let me know. Come on, drink up. We'll teach you how to play. Dealer takes. Yeah, never mind, your brother. <laughs> just hang out with us for a while. <laughs> What's the screen? Oh, <laughs> screen. Oh. <laughs> Contact. We're going to use the main engines for the final approach, so strap yourselves down, everybody. It's not time. <clears throat> Eight miles relative speed. Three hundred miles per hour. Keep it coming. Four miles, 150. Nice, nice. Two miles, 100. Coming up to one. Go to one G. Thousand yards. Three, two, give it away. A 6,000-ton jewel. How would you like to meet the broad who could hang that around her neck? <laughs> the actor that played one of the card players, um, they were putting the moves on um, Catherine Schell, is Michael Ripper, who's very, very familiar. Uh, his face is very familiar, and I was just looking through his... Um, his filmography. Um, he appeared uh, in quite a few Hammer productions, uh, The Camp on Blood Island, The Revenge of Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Brides of Dracula, Captain Clegg, The Scarlet Blade, The Reptile, uh, The Plague of Zombies, and The Mummy Shroud. Where exactly do you want this attached? On the cradle, treated gently. This is number three. It's as liable to go off early as late. Pass on your safety line, Harry. This he might have been in a Doctor Who, too. He does look very familiar. Yeah. <clears throat> they just wasted so many of these good <laughs> actors. <laughs> the other engines. <clears throat> now we 
have the painfully slow face walk. <laughs> Each engine is set for exactly 100,000 pounds thrust, then if we fire in uh, 3 minutes 9 seconds and for exactly 1 hour and 18 minutes. If number 3 goes off right on time. If it doesn't, it'll ruin the whole operation. I'll rig it so that when number 3 goes off, so do all the rest. But it must fire exactly on time. I'll stay here and give it a thump when you give me the countdown. When they do fire, she won't make like a spaceship, but she'll be building up fast. Will you be okay? Provided I get off in the first 10 seconds, yes. <laughs> All right. That's what said. Are you sure you'll be okay? <laughs> you take care of your calculations. I'll take care of myself. <laughs> and I'll get off in 10 Thank seconds. Thank you for asking. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my God. Got synchronized spacewalking. Looks like a frog in space. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be a knuckle punch. about to get off in 10 seconds oh, i'm just the the suspense is um going to be the death of me here <laughs> 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 one. <laughs> <laughs> the music, it just doesn't go with it. <laughs> oh. See you, bitches. <laughs> Will we make it, folks? <laughs> Stay tuned. What would have happened if he failed? The next exciting episode. Ended up in his socks. <laughs> that is some fascinating space walking there. Yeah, Dan. Only it's a little lonely out here. You're making me dizzy. Are you walking or would you like a lift? I think I'll take a lift. Have you back in the hotel before you know it? Try to make it before the bar shut. What the hell kind of costumes are those? That's one that I reckon we should go out again. Three days. According to his box of tricks. Want a drink? Later, I am going to eat. It's going to bomb. I love the old Western set. That would be so cool to have a kitchen themed like an old west saloon where you had the, the double doors you could push through to go in the kitchen that would be trippy there's a lady been asking for you for the past couple of days what's she drinking green mary what green mary rocket fuel and cabbage juice oh my god which takes the taste away. Even the huh? drinks are boring. <laughs> How about a pan galactic gargle blaster, man? That's interesting. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, 
Hi. Found your brother yet? No. Does it look like I found my brother yet? And nobody seems to have seen him in nearly four months. Well, Farside is a big place. You just don't go visiting someone when it's a hundred miles of rough country and in a moon bug, which... Cheers. Mr. Kemp, do you know anything about moon mining laws? Mm, a little. Can you explain the two-year rule? Well, you got a claim for two years, and if you haven't found anything at the end of that time, you get thrown off. Somebody else gets it. There's quite a waiting list. Seems a bit unfair. Maybe, but the moon costs a lot of money to get started. And they can't have people just digging holes and not finding anything. How long has your brother had his claim? Two years. In three days' time. And he hasn't struck anything yet? But he has. He said so in his cable. That's why I'm up here. Well, you better tell him to get over here and prove it before he loses his claim. By radio. Oh, no. But the convoys... No, they wouldn't be quick enough. <clears throat> Will you fly me over there? I know I haven't got $10,000 on me now, but if Wally's found something, we'll pay you back as soon as we're selling it. I couldn't land on your brother's claim. It's much too rough country. But we could go to Farside 5. It's a 24-hour ride and a bug from there. You can owe it to me. Now, what the hell? I'm nearly rich. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> more of uh, whatever they are. You weren't thinking of taking the young lady for a ride, were you, Mr. Kim? I'm a pilot for hire. You're already hired. Drop her. It'll only be a three-day trip. I'll be back in time. You're working for Mr. Hubbard. Drop her. You seem to have your hand on me. Mr. Hubbard's hand. Tell him to keep it on things he really owns. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. If we're gonna play, we're gonna play this by is... rules. This is where things start getting interesting with the slaw right down there. I know, now he's like, turn the gravity off. <laughs> See this this is nothing compared to Space Station K7. Ah, that's a bar brawl. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <clears throat> So the dancing girls were called the Gojos. They were a British TV dance troupe created for the BBC One TV music chart show, Top of the Pops. Touchdown in 17 minutes. I might have to look at it. Be careful, we've just gone weightless. <laughs> oh, just like the Moon Express. Though uh, your ship is different in other ways it'll be dark over far side you are in for a nice long night drive in a moon bug just built for two i'll stay with the ship and give her a sprinkling and get some sleep approaching re-entry point <laughs> I 
haven't seen Wally here in, uh, oh, must be nearly four months by now. I've tried to radio him a couple of times, but uh, it's always chancy in the mountain country. How about relaying him? Well, I could ask Nick Hunter to ask Louis Grenier to ask Tad Connell to pass on a message, but... Uh, He'll give it to Steve Ackles. <laughs> we'll give it to Fred. <laughs> we'll give it to Jeff in catering. Contact Bill Werther. <laughs> He's off radio for the next couple of days. Uh, sorry, there doesn't seem to be any way. Well, when you didn't hear from him, didn't you think of declaring an emergency? With a six day delay sending a message by convoy. <laughs> Hell of an emergency that would be. The satellite's only been dead for 12 days. I know that, but. Nobody dies slowly on the moon. You know that. Mm. Well, can I take a bug then? Well, one's out. We're dying slowly the watching this movie. To do an old I know. <laughs> I'd need a thousand dollars deposit. Don't forget to take out the insurance. <laughs> Thank you. Is it ready? As ready as she'll ever be. I guess she'll get you there. And back? Sure, I do hope so. Climb aboard. Uh, uh, move over, unless you want to drive. This is just gripping. Oscar goes <laughs> too. So, <clears throat> doing a bit of reading, uh, the actress that plays, you know, his his sort of main squeeze in the beginning of the film, who's the sort of security lady, um, is played by the amazing Adrian. Um, what is her name? Um, Adrian Corey. It's her stage name. I'm here to stay and work with my brother. Fine, just uh, da, da, da. until you're used to what's what. She had a small role in A Clockwork Orange. Um, How long does it stay dark? It'll be sun up in 40 hours. It must get awfully cold out there. 200 degrees below zero and up above boiling point when the sun's out. Don't worry, these bugs have efficient heating and cooling systems. Paul's got the moon suits. Okay, I think she was wasted in this movie because she's she's again she's she had personality. She gave her character some actual personality. Why'd your brother pick this end in the moon? He didn't. It was the only claim left when he got here. That figures. What was he mining on Earth? Gold, some silver. Last thing he found was copper up in Montana sold out cheap to a big company. He always thinks there'll be a bigger and better strike over the next two. Two different shots. She always steals the movie. Time. Not only is she gorgeous. Your father? She's doing the he best she can with the work. She, she is. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I can't take anything away have... from the actors themselves. I think they were just given an absolutely oh, dire You're script to work with. Man on That's right. Funny. Meeting you like this. Of driving a hired moving bug? No. I can remember when we got the news that you'd landed on Mars. I was just a schoolgirl then, and I wasn't very interested in space travel. Mm hmm. Mm, fascinating <laughs> stuff. That's one night. It still is. I remember your name from then. The man who'd flown a spaceship 
for 40 million miles. Well, not quite single-handed. Oh, I could still recite you the names of the crew. That's more than I could. Why'd you give it up, exploring? It gave me up. After Mars and Jack Harvey got on Venus, the corporation decided that passengers was where the money was. Sure, it would have taken some money and some new inventions, too, to get to Mercury and Jupiter's moons. Just playing if the chap is really but quiet. Somebody's going to do it. Sleep. <laughs> you want anyway, wake I up there? Passenger pilot. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, people, what is the... I understand. You do. You do. Always something over the next hill. I know. And all the next hill and far away, the Teletubbies come to play. But there is something. <laughs> That's the trouble for them. Yeah, they were smoking some heavy shit when they made that that uh, show. Let me tell you. Well, if you don't have anything better to do. There's a great quote from actress. Um, Adrian Corey, which I'll read out at the end of the film, is, is hilarious about being in A Clockwork Orange, how she ended up getting that role. Wallace. Wally. Come in, please. Over. Wally. Try it again. Wally Taplin, are you receiving me? Over. You might not be switched on. Don't worry, we'll be there in a couple of hours. Oh, great. <laughs> that was the past couple of hours. <laughs> it moves fast in the movie. About the fastest pacing this whole movie's at. <laughs> That's a cool shot mm -hmm. of the two of them. You know, they missed a lot of opportunities to have some some good sort of atmospheric shots but it's just like endless inane dialogue oh, no sign of light it's like an igloo yeah so Eskimo man is going to come out of there and go hey into the <laughs> it's just so much yeah. they just had some you know, cool sets and things, but it just, it's just not working. Wally, can you receive me? Over. Wally, are you receiving me? Over. Okay. Now, we'll Sigourney see. Weaver is the queen of putting on a spacesuit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, nobody did it like her. <laughs> that was in the face. Different colors too, so as you can tell, who's who. Little seventies porn music. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Some of the scenery is like now his crotch is in her face. I As know, and he's got his six shooter on his hip there. You know, it's like. Yes, but we've got to get out there. Okay, Only just... outside of a spacesuit. We're all foreigners, right? Let's learn the language. Now there's heating, air, radio. Oh, steady on. Now with your helmet on, you'll be airtight and properly warmed up. Nothing sexual about that, man. If the heating bus, you won't need me to tell you about it. Are you quite sure this suit works? Sure, I'm sure. 
too late to ask now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the chat for this one. Space outhouse. <laughs> Occupano. Occupy. <laughs> With a vein of nickel in it, <laughs> and a very rich one. Wally did find something. Are you sure? I know a little about geology. Where could he have gone? Not far, or they've taken his bug dozer. He's dead, Jim. He's dead, Jim, yeah. <sighs> Look, there's someone there. Music just totally doesn't match <laughs> the scene. Hey, who turned out the lights? I thought he just made a mistake. He managed for two years without making one, and he didn't puncture his suit. He had to have oxygen to look like to go as he did. One full, one empty. Just a stupid mistake. Oh, well. <laughs> My brother. Okay, let's go get funky. a 60s Batman were more compelling than this. <laughs> you actually run after it. <laughs> that Why did they play that? that? That's our head shaking. Are the Terminators. 
<laughs> they look like Power Rangers. Where's the real pretty shit now, man? <laughs> no <laughs> <way on. laughs> in charge. <laughs> Yeah. Bishop should go. Yeah, got me. Oh, the key fat one. Wait a minute, that was supposed to work. They forgot to charge the battery. Mm. This is where they discover, wait. Your brothers, wasn't it? Someone yeah. sabotaged his suit. Well, was murdered, all right. Whatever's in here, it isn't air. How do we get out of here? Our bugs written off. Let's try this one. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Leave your suit on. It's 200 degrees below zero in here. Can't we turn yeah. the heating on? <laughs> <laughs> What a novel. <laughs> what the hell? And we've only got power for about 150 miles, but not for heating and cooling as well. We'll have to stay in our suits all the way. I can't do that either. The charges won't last more than a few hours. 150 miles? But it's over 200 miles back to Farside 5. Yes, by the track, but this thing's built to go over mountains. We're going to have to try a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> Get up and go in that one. <laughs> Let's uh, go. Creak, creak, creak. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly Ripley driving the um, the drop ship from the Sulaco, is it? Yeah. Oh, what was the name of that that thing she drove? That, that was in the drop ship. It's like a. No, I don't want. Is it valuable enough to murder? I can't even think this movie just dulled my brain. <laughs> <I don't 
kill for this small exchange. We're getting pulled way off course. How long does this clubhouse go on for? Let me check them out. <laughs> we must be nearing the end. Are you sure you can read a map? <laughs> Silly woman. I'm just a dumb broad. I can't read a map. What are you joking? No, I'm just a pretty face. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Well, there's a way out. Will we make it? There's only one way to find out. The question is, will the audience make it? Let me give us a gas. The music is so wrong. We're going to make it. Oh, the, the suspense. Turn your insulation off, save the blast of the charge. We might need it later on. How far now? About 80 miles. It looks as though the worst is over. It seems pretty flat from here. Just when we need the shade. Take off your moon suit. Yeah, hon, get your tits out. What are you going <laughs> to Not that you're not going to work with your brother. Back to Earth? I'll keep mine on. You just take yours off. <laughs> Any jobs going for a good space shipping perk up here? Could be. Yeah, let's let's make it really Thanks. impossible if the shit goes down to put our moon suits back on again. I'm sorry, I dragged you into all this. I'm not. It'd be a bit silly for Bill Kemp to die just here, on the moon. After all the places you've been, I mean. It'd be a bit silly for Bill Kemp to die any place, as far as I'm concerned. So sit down and start telling me how much farther we have to go. <laughs> it's still awake. <laughs> I was going to look something up, and I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any water left? I mean, how fair is that t-shirt? I know. <laughs> uh, not only that, but the women are all like, half dressed in the whole first three quarters of the movie. <laughs> Hello. Well, what's there the she goes. Why nothing? Not a thing. If it gets any hotter, I'll very likely take the rest of it off. Okay. Turn up the <laughs> where's the where's the heat button? <laughs> Only a few miles. How many? I don't know. 
Seven, ten? Which is it? Seven or ten? I'm sorry, but seven means we might make it. Ten means we won't. Look, we've got power for another couple of miles. Then we walk. We've only got an hour's insulation charge left in the suits. Not no raggy. The overheating is melted. The pressure of I only... Uh-oh. Quick, into your suit. Yeah. No, no. Go to your suit. That was fleeting. <laughs> Rent a bug incorporated. <laughs> that was quick. Oh shit, I forgot to take out the insurance. Get into that got a nice cool drink. I know. <laughs> she had three seconds to put about 12 layers. <laughs> she just uh, suddenly appeared. She always gets a man deal. Well, you've really been running up an account this time. Causing a disturbance liable to breach the pressure of an outside room. Malicious damage to hotel property. Miss Tuplin's brother has been murdered out there. Come on. You can do better than that. Yes, well, three other characters got killed, but I did that myself. When you get into <laughs> trouble, you really jump off the top board, don't you? Someone had better get out there and check. Okay. <laughs> we can check right now. Wally Taplin was killed with one of these. Tell me what you think it smells like. Go on. Just one sniff. What do you think it could be cyanide? Funny, I just took it off my own suit. Smells like good fresh air to me. <laughs> but you thought it was cyanide. Now you sold them as air bottles. You sell all air bottles around here. Why? You would better answer him. They, they, they made me. They, they wanted Taplin's claim. It, it was due to expire. It seems it found something on it, and they had to have it. What for? To land an asteroid on it. Expected to see Ripley behind the door. Get away from her, you bitch. <laughs> You've got to get me off the moon. So, you've reached the confession stage and in front of the Bureau of Investigation. With a bad hat. I will kill you. You're on time, Mr. Kennedy. All of you. My associates might not realize how essential you are to this project and would have disposed of you. They tried. Really? All three of them? All three. <laughs> I really did underestimate you, Mr. Kemp. So we're three men short then. We can make a note to engage. Mr. Harbour, you're under arrest. I don't think so. Do you, Harry? Let me get this straight. You got that last to murder my brother just so that you could have a place to land an asteroid. Well, not just any of that. Hey, go on, girl. That yeah, was interesting. 
She just woke up. Uh oh, that's convenient. <laughs> Mr. Kemp, please don't get yourself killed unnecessarily. <laughs> Don't talk to this. I'm gonna, gonna miss you, Bill. He, he in the, the house. Oh God. In your way. Uh. We're quite safe, sir. None of the shots pierced the devil. Yes, well, I believe we need to take off for the asteroid in just under one hour. If you think I'm going to land that thing for you now, you're... But I do. Whitson, when was the last time we abandoned the project without any profit? Antarctic oil, sir, eight years ago. Oh, yes, I remember. There was no oil there, was no, there? Sir. No, but there is sapphire in this asteroid, Mr. Kemp, so... Harry, shoot the young lady. Everybody's looking around. <laughs> What's going to happen? <clears throat> Is there any sound in this movie? <laughs> Jeez. Good Lord. Alt course Alpha 271, Beta 095, speed 8500. 15 minutes to contact, Mr. Hubbard. Good. It gives me time to finish my dinner. Tea. That really does taste like iron filings. <laughs> you wouldn't be trying to poison me, my dear, would you? I didn't think of that. <laughs> I wonder if I could bottle the taste of caviar. <laughs> You're crazy. Did you know that? For trying to bottle the taste of caviar. <laughs> 6,000 tons of sapphire. You won't make a cent. I don't think you know quite as much about this as you think you do. Sapphire is only valuable. I don't well. think that means what you would think it's of. It's about a ton a year, on Earth. <laughs> Put 6,000 tons on the market, and it becomes as valuable as colored glass. I'm so still awake. I'm just going to go out again, Mr. Hubbard. Woolery, you space it. It's a ceramic, tougher than the stuff we have lining the rocket tubes out there. And it can stand more heat than stainless steel. 2,000 degrees centigrade, so my experts tell me. So if one has 6,000 tons of it lying around worth, as Miss Taplin says, nothing, then why not use it to line rocket tubes? They'll be able to build big engines. <laughs> Real big ones. Which could power the ships from Mercury and Jupiter's moons. And they will be my ships, Mr. Kemp. Yeah, Anything they find, <laughs> they might trade at my price. They'll have to invent a new word instead of rich. They won't let you do it. They can't stop me. United Nations Space Charter, Section... Uh, Section 5C, Freedom to Explore and Exploit. Yeah, the new word always is saved. constantly. If the corporation <laughs> did do it, somebody else would. Definitely. The, somebody. the first flight to Mercury will also require a good pilot. The sort of man who made the first landing on Mars, if he hasn't forgotten too much since then. And after Mercury, Jupiter's moons, Uranus. That's <laughs> weird. <laughs> I will need good men to govern those places. Pick your planet, Mr. Kemp. I wouldn't help you put your dirty little fingers on a lump of... Slide 
Fucking this or something? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 100 billion. One of them three. Just remember that. Yes, I have anticipated that. Same system as before. Number three controls the firing of the others. Come out here where the boyfriend can see you, love. Sort of encourage him in his work. We have a margin for error here. If we fire between four and seven minutes, it'll still land on the plane. Good. Anything else? If I'm going to stay down here and thump number three again, I'll need a long line. Miss Taplin? They're up in the passenger deck. <laughs> what can I do? Into the control deck. Use chair. The music doesn't put you to sleep. The pacing sure will. It will land sixteen minutes after firing. Excellent timing, Whitson. Excellent. Claim expired half an hour. <laughs> Most excellent. No <laughs> Gilde. Gilde and ball. Yes. On your right, two rows of switches. Bottom row. One. Two. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 three. Ah, ah, ah. The big... <laughs> You just start to lose your mind. <laughs> 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 oh, that's gotta hurt. See ya, thanks for the fish. <laughs> She can't have a handkerchief. Suppose you think the girl is lying that thing. In the maintenance locker, there is a muscle. She's a girl. Can your engineer land that thing on his own? No. I don't think so. Then he needs you as much as we need the ship. Mr. Kaminsky, if you hear me. Are you ready to go home now? Okay, Harry. That's right, Harry. Come and get me. <laughs> sure, come, Mr. Hubbard. I know that. You're a guy. <sighs> now start earning your pay for once. I know. This is just uh, mind blowing stuff. Something else. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Harry. Now, let's be reasonable, Mr. Kemp. Come here. Stop it. I can't reach it. It's the build up a path. It's too great. <laughs> Again with the 70s porn music. <laughs> I do. And they're supposed to be like in this like really life and death situation and you get this. <laughs> it's 
music in the background. <laughs> well, they'll be on the moon before we are. See her up. We'll follow as far as we can. Right. <laughs> United Nations Space Charter Section 99B No sex is permitted in space Too much <laughs> Most of them Shut Nobody up, else has read it either They'll reach the moon in exactly one minute. On target? On target. And whoever takes over from Hubbard gets 6,000 tons of sapphire. That makes you a very attractive woman. Well, we can prove that your brother was murdered and that he'd found nickel, and the law doesn't allow profit by murder. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. <clears throat> he made his mark on the moon all right. <laughs> oh, steady on. Oh, by the way, what's your room at the hotel like? Why don't you find out? <laughs> <laughs> As she pointed out, he's old enough to be her father. <laughs> Remember the genie in the mirror in the Bugs Bunny cartoon? <laughs> he was like, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, this film broke me. It's well, broken me. <clears throat> I began. I think. <laughs> I think I was seeing it a second time as well. Oh, okay. I think I was drinking an alcoholic beverage when I saw the first time. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot they were playing Monopoly. That was hilarious. Okay. So, <clears throat> great quote here. Let's get to it. Actress Adrian Corey, right? Um, she was, uh, she ended up in at a small role in uh, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. Uh, it says, Corey, not originally cast in the film, was offered the role after two actresses had already withdrawn from the production, one of them, according to Malcolm McDowell, who played Alex DeLarge, because she found it, quote, too humiliating because it involved having to be perched naked on Warren Clark's shoulders for weeks on end while Stanley decided which shot he liked the best. Uh, the actress Corey had no such qualms about appearing naked, joking to McDowell, quote, well, Malcolm, you're about to find out that I'm a real redhead. <laughs> 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 Just struck me so funny. Um, great actress, though. I mean, she actually had, like, personality. Uh, this this movie had no chance, though. I mean, it didn't matter what, how good of an actor you were. It didn't matter. It was just, oh, my God. And uh, it just didn't seem to know what it was doing. My brain is numb. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys thought previous movies were bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did say we were bringing the cheese this season. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the the sets, like the outside sets were breathtaking. I mean, yeah. They really Put in a lot of effort for those, mm -hmm. but it was everything else was. It was just like a muddle. It was just, I mean, the the the, the score had nothing to do with the the tone of the film, in my opinion. I mean, the 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 pacing was as <laughs> as we said, constipating. 
like the, the music you know in the 70s they had all those um, <laughs> porn movie stuff where you go in and, and pay to watch porn on the big screen that's what the music <laughs> is. probably took one from one of those movies said, oh, we're gonna use this score because i really enjoyed it oh god oh god it was just just insane um said under the production notes um Da, da, da. Production began on the 8th of March, 1969, focusing on special effects. Live action filming began on the 31st of March uh, at the Associated British Studios. Dance troupe, the Gojos, appeared in the film. Ori Levi described wearing the moon suits as, quote, sheer hell, receiving blisters from chafing and back problems from the air conditioner installed to keep them cool. Catherine Schell, bless her, lost 13 pounds from wearing the suit, causing her to be put on a diet of malted milk and chocolate to maintain her weight. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's, hard, it's hard to get your head around it. Principal photography wrapped on 10 June. The effects unit at Bray Studios was used on the production. <clears throat> Something just went so terribly wrong with this because you had, you had good people involved. But it just, it just didn't happen. Drugs. <laughs> you need drugs to watch it. Simple, yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. Um, da, da, let's see what else we got. Um, I'm just reading through the notes. Uh, reception. <clears throat> The Variety wrote that the film, quote, never makes up its mind whether it's a spoof or a straightforward adventure yarn, and the uneasy combo comes adrift, even in the normally capable hands of producer Michael Carreras, who also wrote the script, and director Roy Ward B Baker. Uh, it may provide some mild amusement for easygoing audiences, but overall, it's a fairly dull experience, despite some capable artwork, special effects, and lensing by Paul Besson. So once again, it had it had the right components, but mm -hmm. it just it it just like you feed it in the machine and it just came out as a bunch of drivel. Yeah, the right components <clears throat> and the wrong execution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it should have been either a spoof comedy or a serious, and it it seemed like. Like that quote said, it just it, it was like all over the place. You couldn't tell what it was trying to do. It starts off very dramatic and very uh, deep. And, you know, you see this this spacewalk and everything. And then it's just like it's just all over the place. Yeah, it, I'm all over the place. I'm broken. I'm, yeah. I, <laughs> I, my brain is fried after that one. <laughs> And um, let's see. Okay, uh, 1969, Pan Books released a novelization of Moon Zero Two written by John Burke, and it was also adapted into a graphic story by Paul Neary. I bet that was a hell of a lot more interesting. Yeah, uh, and was published um, published in the House of Hammer in April 1977. And um, the film was also shown and parodied on Mystery Science Theater 3000, um, originally airing in the 1990s. Um, so this would have been a good one for Mystery Science Theater. Mm -hmm. I felt like we were in an episode of that when we were watching it. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, now let us know uh, what, what, what's your rating are on this one, guys, because it's going to be fun to see what everyone rates this one. Uh, <laughs> Catherine Stell and Adrian Corey were the stars in this one. I really stood out. Yeah, totally agree. Both are stupid. It, on, but the guy that played his like sidekick is sort of um um companion you know, on the ship mm -hmm. um he he was all right you know he he actually with in a slotted into a better uh or like with better writing or whatever you know he he would have been decent um which one was he i think it was um what was that actor's name? I can't find him on here now. So my head is gone now. Um, but it's, 
again, they had some good actors peppered around in there and they just had these the unbelievably bland. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> what happened, man? <laughs> um, but yeah, the biggest thing that we took away um, when we very first saw it was the instantaneous similarities with um, the Jerry Anderson franchise, mm -hmm. you know, with UFO and Base 1999 and all that. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. And you had the, you had the Go Joes. They weren't exactly the fly girls, but they were, uh, you yeah. know, Badly nice on the cool. eyes, I suppose. Uh, nice on the eyes. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, the best part of the movie was when Catherine Schell just rode there and she's in that little black outfit. I, mean, I know oh. they had, they had like, it was trying to be like James Bond in space at times. It was trying to be, I don't know what. Well, we survived. Sad. Yeah. So Side could have been a lot better, but there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, so thanks everybody. I think <laughs> if everyone's still there, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, um, yeah, we'll uh, see you guys on the next one <laughs> for the trailer at the end. Of course, we'll um, we'll show that one on the show. The trailer is going to be a lot more interesting. Than what we just watched. <laughs> 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 All right. Goodbye, everybody. See Take care, everybody. Time. All right. Bye bye. of the Triffids, when terror rained from the sky. <laughs> the day of the Triffids, when the Earth orbits into a nightmare. When the solid world of everyday reality disintegrates. The whole population is driven by fear towards insanity. The day of the Triffids, when destruction closes in from every side. Pilot, is he blind too? Blind, the blind, blind, blind. It's going to be starvation, fire, pestilence. Anyone caught in the middle of it doesn't stand a chance. I think we ought to get out of here and go on to Spain. How can you know it's any better there? I don't. It doesn't seem to have any central nervous system. Then how does it move? All plants move. And they don't usually pull themselves out of the ground and chase you. You have never been married? No. Why? I guess I've never been in one spot long enough to get caught. And now you are saddled with a family. It might have its points. The day of the Triffids, when law and order are overwhelmed in an avalanche of terror. That's all, folks.